but from dead workers in Bangladesh to her mom's taxes paying for health care, we're subsidizing Walmart's profits with our taxes mm -hmm. and the blood of dead workers in Bangladesh. Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. I'm your host, David Delk. Today, our guests are Lori King and Bob Marshall. Lori's been, Lori has been on our show before, and she's the, on the exec, she is an executive board member of the Portland Jobs with Justice. And we also want to welcome Bob Marshall to Populist Dialogues for the first time today. Bob is working with the organization Making Change at Walmart. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. Good, good to have you here on the show. So uh, we want to talk about Walmart, and we want to talk about Portland Rising, right. uh, and some uh, and an event which is coming up. Mm -hmm. So let's start, Bob, with you. Mm -hmm. Talk about talk about uh, the organization Making Change at Walmart. Uh, Making Change at Walmart is just what it says. It's an effort to um, hold Walmart accountable to the community. As a corporation, they pretty much run wild from Bangladesh to Portland. And Making Change at Walmart is anchored by United Food and Commercial Workers and Jobs with Justice nationwide. Uh, United Food and Commercial Workers is the union that I work for. I'm an organizer. In Oregon, we have about 19,000 members, 14,000 in the grocery industry. So there's a direct link to the standards that Walmart workers experience, which are going downhill to the organized workers who are struggling to get health care and better wages. And um, we can change at Walmart is uh, half of that equation. The other half is the worker side of organizing around the country. You probably remember last fall there were great mm -hmm. some strikes by Walmart workers. Mm -hmm. That was from the Our Walmart Organizing mm -hmm. United for Respect, which is the worker organization that the Walmart workers are forming and joining. Okay, I think that many people will recognize that Walmart is is a pretty unfriendly. A right. place for organizing a union, yeah, and they haven't tolerated <coughs> strikes. So, talk about the significance of these strikes uh, in the fall of last year. It is a tremendous achievement because folks at Walmart do not have a union. I believe we're the only country in the world where there are no union organized workers at Walmart. Walmart has a special squad, uh, literally a Learjet, full of psychologists and organizers mm. and people who fly to a location immediately and hold captive audience meetings with workers and clamp down on any efforts to form a union. So if, if workers are trying to get together, then they bring this Learjet out with a, with a yeah, literally, squad. Yeah, I mean, they literally have an uh -huh. anti-union squad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's in the air probably a couple hours after they get a call. So Walmart workers are not forming a union at this time. They're organizing under federal law called acting in concert, the ability to act as a group, discuss your wages, your health care, mm -hmm. go out on what's called an unfair labor practice strike if the company has done something wrong workers can file paperwork with the government and you can go out on what's called an unfair labor practice strike. W which without is what having they, a union. Without having mm -hmm. a union, oh, yes. Their eventual goal, I'm sure, is to form a union, but that will take some time. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest company in the world. So um, uh -huh. that's the hour Walmart mm -hmm. part. And the strikes last fall uh, had some success. Uh, Walmart thought it was going to be their 50th anniversary with everything that they do bad covered up and nothing but good mm -hmm. news across the media. And the workers went on strike in 25 different cities and really showed the conditions they work under are not fair. They need health care. They need better wages. They need respect. And it was a tremendous victory for them to, uh, to come together as a group and go on strike and get world attention. Tremendous victory. Uh -huh. Yeah. And what, what kind of publicity did they get? They were all over the news. Um, we were in Portland here. We did a demonstration to support them. We were on... Uh, there was a United Food and Commercial worker who was on television talking about it. They were uh, on the national media. They were on YouTube. They were on talk shows. They were on the nightly news. They were all over the place, huh. which shows you. I think. I think the lesson, to, part of the lesson to learn from that, is that Walmart is so high profile, and we have recently seen with the buildings and the workers dead in Bangladesh that whatever they do, bam, it's national news. Mm -hmm. So the workers have. It's a double-edged sword in a way. It's. They're living under the heat of the biggest corporation in the world, which comes down on them, but also when they speak out, they get attention. So, All right. okay. All right. yeah. kind of a double so edge. So talk, talk some more about the situation in Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh is really heartbreaking. When I saw the news Thursday morning on BBC, I didn't know whether to cry or get angry, and I cried for a few moments and then got angry. Uh, companies around, as we know, whether in the past it used to be El Salvador or Taiwan or Mexico, Companies don't go there to fix that country or to help workers or to help the environment or to help the country. They go there because there's either a military dictatorship or such degradation of 
social conditions and workers that they can extract the largest amount of money from, for workers, pay the workers the lowest possible rate and get the largest amount of return on their money. Workers in Bangladesh make textiles for Ralph Lauren, Walt Disney, Children's Place, Walmart, and probably other major, every other major mm -hmm. textile uh, clothing manufacturer in the world. Bangladeshi women make 14 cents an hour. 14 cents mm. an hour. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the highest they can get up in the textile industry is about 24 cents. When they try to organize or change things, roving thugs run through the plants and the streets, beating people. The main organizer in the textile industry last year was picked up by the police, found about a month later dead and tortured in a ditch. It's not a nice place for workers, and Walmart isn't there to help workers. So there was a fire last fall of where 112 women burned to death uh, in a factory that made product for Walmart. Recently, uh, unfortunately, on Wednesday, uh, a building collapsed uh, that had, it was a Walmart factory and several other contractors up above. The building collapse happened because there was a, a crack from the fifth floor to the ground. Walmart workers and the other workers said, we're not going in, it's dangerous. They were ordered to go back in or they would lose a month's pay. They went in, half an hour later the building fell, and I think the death toll now, sadly enough, is approaching 400. While the bottom floor had a bank, David, the bank employees were told this is mm. dangerous, get out. The bank was gone, no one was there. The poor, um, the poor souls that were ordered to work that are now dead, uh, may they rest in peace, were ordered to go back in or they wouldn't get any pay for a month. And if you don't get any pay in Bangladesh, it means you die. Yeah, and at 14 <coughs> cents an hour, right. it's not much pay, but still it's more than exactly. Uh, it's, it, eat it, at least. it's required to, to live. You know, it, it really, uh, this <coughs> incredible uh, travesty tra and tragedy that happened in Bangladesh uh, reminds me of uh, the Triangle fire oh, yeah. here in the United States mm -hmm. a little over 100 years ago. And when that happened, right in the middle of New York City, um, you know, there already was a labor movement that was fighting for union, union rights. Um, and people were very aware of the fire and uh, many, many people in New York State started working on it and, and labor laws were forced into being that later were the template for some New Deal legislation nationally. And it just really shows like the change in, in the global workforce and how yeah. it's working. There it was a local company, local workforce where people really um, were able to see what was happening here. Um, and now, you know, this chain of responsibility, chain of irresponsibility yeah, goes out, yeah. and, <laughs> and, um, and 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 there and and it's, it, it is the purpose of the globalized workforce in the favor of the corporate elite. So it's just it, yeah. it just really shows right. what's happening. Yeah, yeah. It, and so, so you bring up this really important point, which is that this building that collapsed doesn't say Walmart on it. Right. Uh, right. No, they're too smart for that. Yeah. They're too <laughs> smart for that. Right. But yes. but the ability to point. Uh, and say who's responsible exactly. is really, really difficult. Right. One comment I'd like to make, David, is a lot of times I've found when you come up with shocking facts like this or very blunt opinions, think people think you're exaggerating or you're mm -hmm. being an alarmist, right? I found an article by Forbes magazine last week where Forbes magazine, the, one of the preeminent capitalist business journals in the country, actually had a study and said that Yes, these conditions exist in Walmart and in, in these factories in Bangladesh because Walmart, they use their name, Walmart does not pay the contractors enough and drives down mm -hmm. the, the cost of the product so low, right. they say we will pay XX for this shirt and that's all, that the contractors don't have enough money to even have safety going on. Mm -hmm. So yes, Walmart it's is Walmart's responsible. Right, right. And there, before the shirt fire, uh, before the textile fire that Lori's comparing to the Triangle fire, some of the companies were trying to get a conglomeration together to spend some money to improve safety. Walt Disney and Walmart backed out and said, no, we won't pay a penny more for our product. About two months later, the fire happened and 112 people died. Mm -hmm. So to sum up, I would just say, if I was a member of the Gambino Mafia crime family in New York, and I wanted to set up a corporation and a chain of production from Bangladesh to Portland that shafted everybody and, and exploited everybody along mm -hmm. the way, I'd set it up just like Walmart. Right. Because the workers in Bangladesh make 14 cents an hour, are beaten and murdered when they try to form a union, and in, in Oregon and many states in the country, our taxes pay for Walmart workers' health care. Now, God bless the Walmart workers. I'm not here to trash them. They're organizing to combat this on their own. But from dead workers in Bangladesh to her mom's taxes 
paying for health care, we're subsidizing Walmart's profits with our taxes mm -hmm. and the blood of dead workers in Bangladesh. It's really atrocious and out, out of control. And it's not yeah, a surprise yeah. that Walmart is in the vanguard of fighting for trade agreements, uh -huh. like the Trans-Pacific oh, yeah. Partnership, there you go. which, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, a, it, it's those agreements and that, that globalized economy that facilitates Walmart making those cheap goods and then being able to sell them mm -hmm. here. Right. Yeah. We don't need more cheap stuff. We need good jobs. Mm -hmm. We, need we good don't jobs. need more cheap stuff. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> and we need to have some kind of local control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a big part of the problem mm -hmm. is this whole global economy. Right. Um, mass who's mm -hmm. actually responsible for the that's mass, right. wh how the system works. Yeah. What kind of jobs right. are we going to have, David? Mm -hmm. know, and what kind of behavior is acceptable by these corporations? Mm -hmm. Those are the two big, and I think that right. we've been facing this for about the last year. The bailout showed a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the things that uh, we talk about or hear as a phrase is socialize the cost and privatize the profit. And so what we've just been talking mm -hmm. about illustrates mm -hmm. that. And do you want to talk about that do you for, want to take for that a moment longer? I've been talking a lot. Do you want to take no, that? Go. For me, it <laughs> means, like what I was saying, how um, here in Oregon, the Walmart doesn't pay their workers enough uh, so they can purchase health care on their own. They don't get enough hours to qualify for the health care. It's like one of those salmon trying to go up the ladder into the reservoir. And if you don't get enough hours, you don't qualify. So they keep all the profit. And my mother's taxes and my taxes pay for Walmart workers' health care. That's what I mean by socializing the cost. Mm -hmm. It used to be companies would leave a big toxic waste dump mess and we'd have to pay to clean it up. Now they've scammed us so much that we're actually paying for the workers' health care while they pocket the profits. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of what it means to me. Okay. Much less the whole right. Bangladesh where mm -hmm. it's the cost of human mm -hmm. lives. R right. People are dying so oh. I can buy a shirt for a dollar cheaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that fits mm -hmm. into like uh, what, what um, I'll bring out a little bit later about we're in Portland Rising, we're fighting for uh, healthy cities. Yeah. And can we have a healthy city in Portland, a healthy community, with uh, Walmart being able to act just the way it yeah. wants to, uh, driving down wages, creating um, a, a model of contingent workers that will be, you know, uh -huh. they'll be, it'll, it'll, it'll make it even more easy for the city to uh, city of Portland to keep laborers as contingent workers working in the parks because it, it's that model of, 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 of driving down the quality of, of uh, working conditions. Um, and then on the top of that, not being able to have money for paying for libraries and schools because we're paying for... Yeah, it's a double whammy. Double yeah, so whammy. is that, <laughs> is that oh, right. you know, it's, uh -huh. it, it creates a very yeah. strong um, tendency toward a very unhealthy city, unhealthy right. community. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so let's return to, to Walmart. Walmart announced that they were going to build 17 stores in, in Portland, in, yeah. in Oregon or Portland? Uh, well, it's throughout greater Vancouver, Portland metro. Mm -hmm. What their usual uh, approach is, is they, six or seven years ago, they would build mega stores and there were a lot of land parcel fights and people in the communities kind of freaked out because there were traffic problems and environmental problems and huge, you know, these huge stores left mm -hmm. a huge foot, giant footprint in the uh, community. Uh, several of those were stopped in Portland uh, and Gresham and other places and around the country. So now they have a new strategy. They're called neighborhood markets mm -hmm. where they're smaller and there's already been a store at that location that, you know, was a grocery store mm -hmm. and didn't make it. So the building permits, boom, bam, they're done. The store is in. They don't sell all the um, auto stuff and nursery stuff and furniture. They're mostly a, a market. But they're saturating the whole area around Portland with 12 of those, which I call slip-ins. They're in Vancouver, they're in Gresham, they're in Beaverton, they're all over the place. And there are five land parcels waiting to be built on with the mega stores. So what I feel, and I think it's proven that Walmart's strategy is, is come in, do the neighborhood market, spread out a little charity money to the Boy Scouts and the local police athletic league and this church or that church, and um, calm everybody down, get a neighborhood market in. Some of them are across the street from union job stores. So you're not creating more jobs, mm -hmm. you're moving the jobs around mm -hmm. is what you're doing. And then they'll, when they get those 12 open, they'll work on the big five mega stores. And my question to the community not only is what kind of jobs and what kind of corporate behavior, but how many Walmarts? 17, 34, 86, uh -huh. 150? I mean, where does this stop? Right, yeah. yeah. So, so my, my understanding is that when they, if, if they build all of these stores that they have plans for, that they'll have as many locations as Fred Meyer? I don't know the exact comparison, Something but you're, like yeah, that. their mm -hmm. whole goal is. The Portland Development Corporation and around the country had this approach where they found food deserts, so-called, and maybe in Detroit or Chicago, or huge 
urban areas, there are places where a market isn't close. Mm -hmm. That's not the case here. Some of these stores are opening up across the street from the Union Job stores with Safeway and Fred Meyer. So they're just moving jobs mm -hmm. around, dominating the market and uh -huh. kind of taking over. It's an invasion, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So uh, <coughs> what, what, what could uh, workers or just citizens mm -hmm. in Oregon and Portland do to stop this? There's been some uh, pushback around the country, which has been successful. In Boston, they stopped a couple markets in some of the suburb areas. Uh, Chinatown, California had 10,000 people in a march last year and stopped a store from being opened up in beautiful uh, downtown LA, Chinatown. You can call me for starters and have me come to your organization and do an educational about Walmart. Okay. You can go to the website, uh, makingchangeatwalmart.org, makingchangeatwalmart.org and check out what is going on. You can sign petitions to protest Walmart's behavior. The most important thing would be to call me at my number and I can come and do an educational for your group or talk to you and there'll be demonstrations in front of Walmarts. Walmart workers in Oregon are starting to organize so they're gonna need to be defended. Um, but I think the best thing would be I'd really like to talk to you and my name is Bob and my phone number is 503-701-2636. That's 503-701-2636. Seven zero one, two six three six, and we can push back okay. on Walmart. Excellent, excellent. Good. Thanks for having me. Good. Yeah. And so we want to turn to you, Lori, yeah. now. And you have been working uh, through Jobs with Justice mm -hmm. uh, on something called Portland Rising. Right. And you're planning an event right. uh, coming up sometime mm -hmm. soon. You've had events before. Mm -hmm. So why do you do this work? Why? Well, first of all, a little bit about um, what Portland Rising is. It's uh, it's a project of Jaws with Justice, and what we attempt to do is, is, is new and, and really experimental. What we're doing is trying to get uh, different unions and community groups, instead of um, focusing only on one campaign or their own campaign solely, we're trying to pull these campaigns together, union and community campaigns, so that um, the planning is done collectively. So there's really a lot of meetings where people are getting to know each other from different groups, coming up with priorities of what to do, and it's really building strong relationships between groups. And um, we put on, we have big events. This uh, We're going to be doing one June 29th, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and what we do is not only highlight the individual campaigns, which might be for a teacher's contract um, or, or uh, city workers, but also highlight the community aspects of it, is that, you know, the, where the teachers are fighting for education, for class sizes that are good for students, and for uh, against school closures, and city workers are fighting to keep up the, um, the great uh, um, rec centers and parks that we have in Portland, but are being you know, constantly being chipped away at. So it'll be um, a situation where we have community and, and unions really working together to create the event and bringing lots of people there. And in addition, uh, we want to raise our positive vision of what we're fighting for. Uh, where there's lots of things we're fighting against. We're totally fighting against being chipped away at. Um, but we're fighting for, in this case, we're going to be lifting up the whole idea of fighting for a healthy city, a healthy community. And Walmart is a perfect example of, you it's know, a the Walmart child. A poster <laughs> child of the, <laughs> the, the degradation, <coughs> not only of wages, but also of working conditions, of making work contingent instead of something that can be a lifelong project. Uh, of something that can support someone. So how can we have a healthy city with this, you know, degradation of wages? Where where are people supposed to? How are people supposed to afford housing? Where will they live? Mm -hmm. um, it it really affects all of us when this happens. It's not just a single issue. Uh, same thing with 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 education. Uh, class sizes are now up to forty students in a wow. in a biology class doing. Uh, dissecting a worm or dissecting a frog. How can teachers really have, mm -hmm. have, you know, pay attention to students? And it turns out that in the new Portland Public Schools budget, and this teachers are, are fighting against, uh, they are pr uh, pushing for warehousing high school students for two periods a day in, uh, st you know, massive study halls, which are just oh. holding tanks. Yeah. I mean, how are high wow. school students going to feel about their future? How are they going to feel about, um, how they're being cared for. It's not a nurturing env environment um, when, when so many funds are taken from that instead of uh, yeah. 
you know, mm -hmm. war and the, and the other things that we should be looking at as a whole. So in Portland Rising, not only are we, uh, are we trying to pull uh, different campaigns and communities together in creating a single event, uh, but we're also trying to create some common understandings um, between different sectors, different kinds of workers, and different walks of life, uh, so that the corporate media can't divide us, which is what constantly happens. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, between public workers and private workers. Uh, you know, the public workers are taking all our taxes. We have to be able to to counteract that with a broader vision of what, where our taxes are going. Mm -hmm. In the in the big picture, to Walmart, to Walmart, <laughs> yeah, uh, to Walmart, right. or other corporations, to Walmart, yeah. <coughs> Nike. Uh, so exactly. we have to have a, a common understanding uh -huh. of where the, our taxes are going, and instead of you know one worker or one type of worker blaming another, and who you know who's paying the taxes, mm -hmm. you know yeah. where's the brunt of that? So all of these things have to come out, and you know we're really looking toward people pulling together for the long haul and and creating uh, uh, creating um, a. Uh, a situation where workers and unions f who are traditionally just work alone are sitting at the same table trying mm -hmm. to plan out Yeah, that's a big that. problem because we do, we do tend to look at these mm -hmm. as single issues. Yeah. And right. when we look at them as single issues, we almost always get defeated. Right. And that's why we want to look at healthy community because that's a way that we can, it, it's a, it's, it seems it's like an nice easy way framework. to start uh -huh. seeing how we are truly connected. Mm -hmm. That it's not just those Walmart workers over there. Yeah. It affects homelessness. It affects, um, you know, all the things that we see. Mm -hmm. Working employees. people are not a special interest like Ronald Reagan used to say. <laughs> right. They are the community. They are, they are the, the, whole the community. The UFCW yeah. member of the Walmart worker go to the Lutheran church or the right. Jewish synagogue uh -huh. or whatever. Right. We are, we're the we people, the we are community. the community. Oh, right. They're the special interest, not, not that the is workers. Absolutely, oh, right. that is yeah. absolutely yeah. true. It really, it really makes a difference though, who gets to control the message. Oh yeah. <laughs> right, and, yeah. That's, yeah. and that's right. why we, ha we, we love alternative media. We love the um, independent Good media problems. like this, you know, this program, yeah. Populist uh -huh. Dialogues. And also we have to just do it face to face. We have to be building these common understandings together. Um, and, and I think that what, what we're saying, what Bob was saying about Walmart is true in general, that we are, as, as, a, as a working class in this country, unions and working people in general, we're on the ropes. Um, you know, we see that, you know, there's been decades of, of uh, wage suppression. Walmart, of course, is in the vanguard, but there's been decades of wage suppression since the 70s. You know, there's been globalization, privatization, and... Um, and in addition, a growth of contingent workers, huge growth of contingent workers. So things are really rough, and our political system basically supports and encourages that. Mm -hmm. um, so we are really, you know, we're, we're really on our own in a way that we have to find new strategies to build these uh, broader right. and deeper alliances. Yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. so our, our guest next week is mm -hmm. going to be Michael Wade, and he's going to be talking about the People's Budget Project here Very in good. Portland. Yeah. And part of that discussion is going to be putting some meat on some of those points you just made. Great. Uh, so, yeah, so I definitely invite anyone who's watching this program to be right. sure to watch next week right. as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing that you know, strikes me is that uh, our motto for the Alliance for Democracy is the issue is not the issues, the issue is the system. It's the system. Yeah. It's and truly this the system. Really this is really... Both, both of what you're talking mm -hmm. about really starts addressing mm -hmm. the system the as system. a whole rather than fragments. Fragments, Is yeah. it a race to the bottom or are we building healthy communities? Right. Yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. we have, uh, exactly, because we have um, you know, look what happened in Texas with the uh, with that big disaster in the fertilizer plant, exactly. and that's a perfect mm -hmm. example of that. We're moving in the direction of Bangladesh. We need to be forming uh, cross-border labor alliances to raise the floor worldwide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's being pushed down, and, and there's there's no reason to think that, that 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 what happened in West Texas won't continue to happen. There's no OSHA, not enough OSHA people to check all the factories, right. and the the union busting of the last. Um, 30, 40 years um, w prevents people from being able to call OSHA. Right. So, uh -huh. I mean, it's moving in that that. Right, yeah, that so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you because sure. I want you to give us some details about oh what's right. happening. Uh, and we've got three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Okay, I want to invite everybody to um, a an event, uh, a Portland Rising event, Portland Rising for Healthy Communities on June 29th. 
It's a Saturday. It's going to be a morning start, uh, so stay tuned for the exact place and meetup point. Um, they're going to be uh, workers and community people from different walks of life, and uh, we will be having a great day of action pushing for healthy communities and, and in the direction of healthy communities and away from the degradation of work that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Is this is this something that's only happening in Portland, or is this a, a nationwide? This is Portland. Multiple communities. Yeah. So okay, yeah, so it's Portland. Uh, kind of setting the model yeah. for other, what other communities right. might be exactly. thinking about too. Okay, some okay. some of it's happening in other communities, but uh, here it's called Portland Rising by Jobs and Justice. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are fight backs all over. Oh, there are fight backs oh, all over, right. but right. not that particular day. Uh, I mean, the, yeah, right. the Chicago teachers. In oh, fact, yeah. I would say the what the Chicago Good teachers example. union is doing is like they're, they're our mentors. Uh, you know, what they're doing right now after they, they settle their contract, um, uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel is trying to close down 54 high schools oh, wow. in Chicago, uh, mainly in African-American African neighborhoods, and the teachers are working, you know, deeply hand-in-hand -hand with the community to keep that from happening. Mm -hmm. And I bet yeah. the taxpayers in Illinois are paying for Walmart workers' health care. Yeah, uh -huh. they yeah, are. Yeah, 23 right. states yeah. have reported in that uh -huh. they're paying about a billion dollars, and that's only with half the uh -huh. states reporting mm. in. So okay. we've got to stop the race to the bottom exactly. and start building healthy communities that respect right. workers. And right. this hating worker thing that's happened in the last 30 years is really quite amazing. It's mm -hmm. like yeah. blame the workers mm -hmm. for almost everything. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> well, and of course, that well, uh, we don't really have time to get <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Here, I, I'm going to go on to the next half hour. Yeah. <laughs> right. which we only have a, a, about a minute and a half left. So, yeah. so I actually, I'm going to so thank you very much for being here. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Okay. It's great. Right, good. So, uh, our guests today have been Lori King uh, and Bob Marshall talking about Walmart and Portland Rising. More information on the Walmart uh, situation, uh, as Bob has discussed, is available at www.changewalmart.org and as we move closer to that June 29th event and the activities being planned by Portland Rising, please check the Portland Jobs with Justice website at www.jwjpdx.org. So in addition to the information Lori has talked about on the June 29th actions, about which we will have more information on later programs, here in Portland, Alliance for Democracy is co-sponsoring a People's Assembly on the Trans-Pacific mm -hmm. Partnership, which is a, going to be a big right. part of this race to the bottom that we're talking about. The TPP is the new massive so-called free trade agreement of the Pacific Rim, which has also been called NAFTA on steroids, mm -hmm. and also a corporate coup d'etat. Portlanders will join with cities and towns around the world holding community assemblies to discuss the problems with the TPP and the whole free trade model. I want to thank our volunteers who donate their time to get our program on the air. So thank you to Roger Bates, Beth Kerwin, Dave King, Brad Leach, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas for being here today. And thank you for watching. I hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye.